Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Stateless Sanctuary Podcast. I'm your host, Dave Romero from StatelessSanctuary.com, and joining us today again is Ron Lipbach. Ron, how you doing? Happy Friday. I'm here. Happy Friday. Um, we were just chatting a little bit about this just before we get on. Uh, more wide receiver rumors heading the Steelers' way. It's just unavoidable. Another day, another Brandon Ayuk rumor. Day, you know, if it's uh, a day that ends in a Y, you know there's a Brandon Ayuk rumor. <laughs> I guess most of this stems from they redid restructured Cole, Hol- Cole Holcomb's contract today. Yeah. Saved about three point five million. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think they could have pulled off this trade without doing a, a restructure. So yeah, I think it's combined with the fact that Ayuk wasn't in practice today, or at least rumored not to be in practice. So too, you know, yeah, you know, and got to add those two things together and make it the exact picture you want it to be, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've been doing this Brandon Ayuk thing since well before the draft. It, it, I'm, I've said it a couple of times in this podcast. I'm tired of it. Yeah, I wish they would just come to some re- resolution, either sign him or trade him or do something. Let's yeah. let's move on. The longer this goes on, Ron, I don't even know if I'm convinced if he's a thirty million dollar a year wide receiver. Right? Like DJ Moore just signed for what twenty seven per, and he's a pretty good wide receiver. You could make an argument he's better than. Brandon Ayuk. I don't know. I think Ayuk is the better player, honestly. But you know, it, you know, there's a, it's a, a lot that goes into it, right? Is any wide receiver in this system worth thirty million? That's a good point as well, right? When when you know you're running the ball more than you know more than most teams, doesn't mean you still don't want a good wide receiver. But then you got Pickens on the other side. What do you do with him? Uh, you know, he's going to get paid soon. Do you not pay him and keep Ayuk if if Pickens is? Yeah, I, I don't know. It, it, there's a lot that leads me to believe that they, it's not a move they would make, but it is a new front office with you know new goals and they clearly feel pressure. So, you know, maybe maybe they do make a move. You know, we never saw Mika for Pat, for Mika uh, Fitzpatrick you know coming. So, no, definitely not. You never know. And that was after Ben got hurt and the season was theoretically over. So, yeah. they still made that move. So who knows what they'll do now? I mean, you know, maybe maybe they're. Maybe they feel a lot of pressure and they feel like, you know what, go great guns and, and just, you know, worry about the money later. Certainly possible, Ron. It's certainly possible. Um, I know they all feel pressure to win a playoff game. I mean, the, yeah. the owners finally put his foot down and said, we need to do better. Yeah. So does that lead them to do something out of the box? I guess it's possible. I guess it's possible. Like, yeah. So many points that point against it. Like you brought up, it's a running football team. Do you really want to invest that much money in a wide receiver? Are you going to give up a first round pick if that's what it's going to take? The compensation is going to be something. It's a, it's a lot of factors. I, I don't know. I, I'm honestly just. I think if they could get him for not a one, which I think is hard to believe they could, uh, but if they can get them, if they can get him for a price they feel is maybe not a steal, but really good value. I think they would consider it highly, but you know, I don't know what that means to them. What's good value from the Steelers' perspective, right? But if they can get him for just a one or maybe a two and a four, you know, whatever, you know, stranger things by far have happened. So, you know, if, if they can pull that kind of thing off, then maybe the money matters a little bit less. And don't forget, if you're paying him more, you're not drafting guy for round one next year. That's a big you know, hunk of change not hitting your cap. True. Sure. You know, it, it, you know, it's all speculation. It, it's all just, you know, playing games. But at the end of the day, you know, I think you're looking at Van Jefferson and Pickens and Calvin Austin pushing for that spot and Roman Wilson, when he's healthy, pushing for that spot. But I think that's the real picture we'll be looking at here. I tend to agree, too. I think that's the most likely scenario at this point. Uh, the other side of that Hol- Cole Holcomb restructure is, do we take this as bad news for his uh, recuperation from that knee injury? Are they thinking they might not see him for a few weeks in the season and he's not really worth a full contract. Is that well, they did say this? he wouldn't be ready till probably mid season. And I think it's good news if you're Cole Holcomb because the alternative is being cut. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And that didn't absolutely. happen. Right. So I, I thought in all honesty, when I heard the news a few days ago that he was not really going to be ready you know, as quickly as they were hoping that he was going to be released the, you don't restructure a guy like this and then release him. So it, yeah. that's if I'm Cole Holcomb, I'm thinking, wow, I, I still have a job. That's great. So I think it's probably good news for him. I think it means he stays, and yeah. I think it means, uh, you know, there. I, I don't, I don't know what it means in terms of anything else, but it could just be one of those deals they made with him is 
like look you know either we cut you or or we're, we're paying you a lot less what, what do you want so exactly. I, I think it probably that's the that's the real story i think it's a good point i think it almost guarantees that cole holcomb will be with the team through the remainder of this season at least yeah with the structure there um some other injury news uh roman wilson you referred to him a little bit earlier he's out you know week to week at this point with an ankle uh, that's bad news he's a rookie you want him to get as much camp time as possible uh, there's still time for him to get some preseason action if, if all goes well and it heals quickly enough and, and hit the train running. But you never want to see a rookie lose any camp time. Yeah, and especially a rookie that, you know, you were really hoping would – I mean, he was just coming on too. I mean, yep. he – I mean, from all reports, he was looking okay, you know, earlier, and then he really started coming on when he got the injury. So it's tough to see a guy who's finally sort of hitting his stride a little bit getting derailed. And, you know – I don't know. I mean, he was never going to be, in my opinion, your 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 starting wide receiver this year. They've got. I just have weird weird thoughts on this whole wide receiver thing because they've got a lot of threes and fours. You know, it's it's that one spot that's always confusing to me is that second spot, and mm-hmm. it looks more and more like that's going to be Van Jefferson, and you can put Calvin Austin out there. You got Scotty Miller who can do some interesting things in the slot and so forth, and you've got some other guys. Uh, you know, it would be great to have Roman Wilson, but I feel like it's either him or Calvin Austin on the field of this anyway. Mm-hmm. So you got Austin, and then next year maybe Wilson starts when he's got his feet well a bit more. I mean, this is a third round pick. This is not a first round pick we're talking about. Yeah. Yep. So I feel sure. like you know, this is not a guy that anyone expected to come in here and and start. At least I certainly didn't. So. Yeah, you know, I I don't know. I, I it's it sucks that he's derailed a little bit, but I I think his his contributions this year are always going to be sort of third down slot kind of guy anyway, not, not a starting spot anyway. Well, I think if he knocked it out of the park and camp, I mean, what, as bad as this wide receiver group is, he could have challenged for a starting spot, honestly. Um, I mean, how much would it have taken to overtake Van Jefferson? I mean, yeah, I don't know. I, th- I think, I mean, Van Jefferson's having a good camp, which he is, is having a good encouraging camp. at least. Calvin Austin supposedly is having a really good camp. Uh, I mean, you hear a lot about what he's doing, but you don't hear a lot about plays being made. So I don't know mm-hmm. what that means. But he made some, but I mean, not a, not a ton. So uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it'll be interesting to see how this all shakes out. But I, I, it seems to me, to your point, it's Van Jefferson, Calvin Austin, and Roman Wilson was always going to be sort of that third or fourth guy anyway. Yeah, I, I, I just didn't see him overtaking anyone unless he shined really early on and he didn't. Uh, he just started shining. So, yeah. um, you know, we'll, we'll see. It's, it's, you know, I, I think he's, as, I, I think he's a guy who's going to catch, you know, 20, 30 passes this year. And then next year he'll be expected to contribute a lot more. Uh, the Steelers signed Marcus Golden this week, which you and I talked about the last time we yeah. talked on the podcast. Um, you had, and I thought you were correct in saying that it might go a little later. So you didn't have to go through the whole camp yeah, and just catch on later, but this is a good signing. I don't know how you can – I don't see anybody, you know, being mad at a signing like this. This is depth work. I mean, I mean many people mad are going to be ones who, who who think, you know, Herbig should be yeah. the guy and, and we don't need a fourth guy or something like that. I, I was a little surprised considering, you know, they were praising Moon's play and they've already got yeah. Herbig. So, you know, they theoretically could have seen themselves as four deep already. But clearly they saw a need. Um, Perales got hurt. And he got he got let go. So and they also had what's the other guy? The guy I interviewed actually who was showing flashes too. At uh, West West Westhoff West Westhoff. Yeah, no, no Westhoff though he was too. It's it's oh the, I know Karen Johnson right. Karen Johnson was yeah. was also and I, yeah yes. he's he's another guy that was flashing. So at this stage I was actually surprised at the move because of all the things you're hearing at outside linebacker. But I'm certainly not upset at it. I mean it's good to yeah. have him. I don't know if he was holding out just for a little extra money. I, I didn't get the contract details, but this seemed destined to happen. I, I don't know any other teams banging down Marcus Golden's door. Although he did have a good season, a pretty decent yeah. season last year. Um, and it's a one-year deal. Steelers. So uh, yeah. my guess is he probably got another offer, and the Steelers were, you know, they, they probably always had their eye on him, and they said, you know what, yeah, well, let, let's let's just bring you in. Steelers cut a couple of guys, Marquez Calloway and Josiah Scott. Those both kind of surprised me a little bit. I thought yeah. those guys would stick around through camp. Um, Calloway yeah. had some special teams, you know, in his background. I thought maybe he'd stick, but 
Yeah, I was surprised too. It seemed early to do that. Maybe they're trying to give them a chance to catch on elsewhere. That's good. Uh, yeah. you know, and the Steelers are, are known to do that. The Josiah Scott, I mean, he seemed like he was in the running a little bit for um, for that nickel spot, but maybe he's dropped off and, and the writing was on the wall and they just, you know, he might have asked to be yeah. let go. Sometimes that stuff happens too. Uh, you never really hear about that till years later or something. But I, I think, uh, you know, both those guys are surprising, but, you know, in a way it's good. Because if you're getting rid of Josiah Scott, who theoretically was in some sort of running for that nickel spot, that means they've got guys they like. Yep. And the guys are starting to to sort of break away from the pack, so to speak. And so that's good news. I mean, in a weird way. So, yeah, you know, I take that as hopeful signs that they really like what they've got. Uh, we had a big fight this week at training camp, which is not necessarily bad news sometimes. Uh, I guess Landon yeah. Roberts gave... If Landon Roberts wasn't my favorite player before, he's he just <laughs> continues to, you know, they asked him about it on an interview and he just gave a big smirk. Like, I guess he gave a little shoulder to Justin Fields, knocked him down. But the good thing yeah. about this is the old line took exception and came to Justin Fields' uh, defense, which a couple of years ago wasn't happening all that quickly. I guess Mason McCormick was one of the first guys yeah, yeah. Um, to jump in the fray, which is good to hear. Um, these things happen in camp. It's Sometimes it's a good thing. You, know, you like it. I mean, it, to an extent, you like it. I yeah. would not. I'm not saying this happened, but I would not be surprised if you know Tomlin's behind this a little bit. Talk to his vets and say, "Hey, you know what? I'm I'm not seeing enough of of something out there." You know, uh, and also Fields is, you know, a, a running quarterback can be a really frustrating thing for a defender. Yep. Yep. And so I wouldn't be surprised if there was a little bit of like, "Okay, cut the shit out." You know, first of all, <laughs> this is camp. You know, because you can't tackle a guy, especially in camp. You're not even allowed to look yeah. at a body in camp. So, the, you know, when the quarterback runs like that, it got, it has to be super frustrating for a defense because you're not even allowed to do anything about it. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. And Elena Roberts is one of those veteran guys and he's a Tomlin guy. He could have, you know, got a little told to send a little message, which is. Yeah. Know, yeah. It's good. It's good for the team. Yeah. All right. Let's roll through some of these position groups. Let's start with quarterback. Um, Russell Wilson still isn't doing much. Um yeah, it's it's concerning. Bordering on concerning now. Yeah, yeah, it's getting yeah. to that point now. We're always doing it's concerning. In, in, and off the ball right now. So they're not they're not talking a lot about what's really going on. I, I think it's probably a little bit more serious than they've let on. Um, uh, it's not the oh we just don't want him to strain a, a calf kind of thing. I think it's a little bit more than that. But I mean, he's out there in pads, so at least there's that. Yeah, it's just you know you want this guy practicing with these with these guys. This is this is it, and he's not. So that that's concerning, and Fields is looking good at times and inconsistent at other times from our reports. So that's a little, you know, I, I don't know what to make of that, right? You know, Fields is that guy who's going to make three really amazing plays and then throw the ball, you know, and, and then throw an interception or fumble it. And that's that's the thing. He, he, he's been doing that a little bit in camp. He's been inconsistent again in camp. So he'll make those great plays and those great throws, and then you look, oh, my God, look how great he is, and then the, – a few days later, a few plays later, he's skipping passes and throwing the ball behind guys and all that. So, you know, that's why I say, like, you know, all these great plays guys make are great, but consistency is still king, and yeah. he's not consistent. I guess he fumbled the other day in camp, which is one of the big concerns with him. He yeah. fumbled a lot in Chicago. Yeah, uh, the turnovers are a huge, huge red flag with him. Yeah, so you want to see him clean that up as much as possible. Um, Ron, he's going to drive Steelers fans crazy. Oh, well, yeah. If he gets the starting job, me included, because there is a part of me that would love to see him win the starting quarterback job. He gives you that little extra, you know, level that Russell Wilson or anybody else doesn't have. That running, that exciting play, uh, playmaking ability. The, the, turn, the turn of the coin of that is he's going to throw some interceptions. He's going to fumble. He's going to drive us all crazy. Yeah. And he's going to miss passes. I mean, he, he – yeah. I mean, for every great pass, there's a skip pass or a pass behind a guy. I mean, he's he hasn't looked for all the reports of the guys that that I believe you know that I follow, not like the guys in the bleachers who are, you know, field stand stands with uh you know their yeah you know, with, with just shooting video. I, I think from the guys that are really on the field level and hearing the coaches and talking to guys, yeah, you know, he's been inconsistent, and that's been the story of his career, and so. You know, if you have to, as a backup quarterback, sure. You know, he's a great backup quarterback, but he's not a guy you want starting right now, not the way he's looked at camp. So 
you you hope Wilson gets healthy quick and and shows when he's thrown the ball, he's, he's looked good. Yeah, uh, he's just not been out there a lot, and that's alarming for a team that's not gelling as much as it should because the guys aren't out there and playing their spots. Yeah, I mean we're two weeks in now. This is a brand. He's a brand new quarterback with a brand new offensive coordinator, a brand new system. Yeah, he needs to be out there taking reps as much as any. I know he's a veteran and he's been around a while, but yeah, it's still it's new. Not a good situation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's switch over to running backs. Um, Cordero Patterson's working a little bit on the sidelines, but he's still not out there yet. You'd like to see him get in there at some point soon. Um, not much for the running back. Jalen Warren, I guess his backs on backers. He was given Patrick Queen the business, I think it was. Um, yeah. Jalen Warren's just tremendous. Just yeah. what a find. And Wilson right. too. Peyton Wilson, he evidently yep. gave a good drumming to. Uh, yeah. I and mean, it's, they're deep. I think they're pretty deep at running back. I like, think yeah. they like a couple of the undrafted free agents too. Uh, Shampkin, uh, I think is the the Yale guy or Harvard guy. Oh, I forget where he's from. One of one of those colleges. Uh, and then uh, you know the other guy like they like too. So they they've got a couple of undrafted free agents they like. So I think they're and then they have Patterson, of course. So I think they're they're in good shape there. Yep. Wide receiver. Uh, I wrote down in my notes. Van Jefferson's got a lock on wide receiver too right now, unless. You know, something happens, and he's been pretty decent. Yeah, so far. I mean, he was in pole position and done nothing to nothing to yeah. lose from everything you see. He's been making plays, uh, a couple drop passes. You don't like to see those, and he's been known to have those. Mm -hmm. So I think he's going to be another guy who's going to frustrate fans a little bit with some drop passes here and there, uh, especially considering how much people were on Deontay Johnson for that stuff. So, uh, but yeah, supposedly he's looked really good. So wonderful, you know. I mean, we'll see how it plays out in real life in, in real games, but you know, it'd be, it'd be a nice surprise if he he's looking good, right? I mean, to take yeah. that pressure off would be great. Uh, George Pickens has been George Pickens. This yeah. has all the makings of a breakout season for him if he can control his temper and and, and behave, yeah. you know, and not get into fights with the wide receiver coach. Um, yeah. It's, it's at, least, all... at least he complimented the wide receiver coach recently in. I think, you know, I, I he he's just gonna be a hothead. He's gonna be that guy. Yep. You know, he's gonna be and, and I think with him, if you possibly you're gonna have to take that stuff sort of with a grain of salt because he's the kind of guy that seems to be in the moment. And then it's not like it means something more than in that moment, which is important because if you got a guy who's actually upset long term, that's a big difference from a guy who was unhappy because on that one route, he didn't get that one throw. So that's the way I'm seeing. I'm, I'm hoping it's playing out with him. We'll see. Yeah, uh, he's. It's all in front of him. It, it, he's yeah. talented enough to really have a breakout season. Yeah, he's got. Uh, he's got a wide. He's got to widen his game a bit, and I think that's what this wide receiver coach is really trying to beat into him. Is yeah. like, and and he's got to embrace that or not. You know, he could be as good as he wants to be, or exactly as peaked as he as he is now. Right. I mean, that's up to him. Did you catch that you were using him in a slot a little bit yeah. in practice? So that that's great, moving him around, because he's going to be every defense's number one target. So the more you move him around, give him stuff, you know, a chance to get open, the better off he'll it be. Seems like, it seems like they're doing a lot more innovation around the horn, which I'm really yeah. happy about. You know, uh, uh, a lot more imagine, interesting stuff. Imagine having a legitimate offensive coordinator. What can that do for you? <laughs> yeah, even on defense. I mean, it seems yeah, like they're – it seems like they've just they've – just, ripped open the box of interesting ideas and said, you know what, we are, we are, you know, from personnel to strategy, we are, we are breaking it open. You know, we're breaking open the emergency kit and yeah, this is it. This is the time. So we'll yeah. see if it works, but I, it seems like they're really trying new stuff. I'm um, short of that. Uh, we've heard some stuff about Calvin Austin. And then after that, the other guys are not, I haven't heard of Pete. No, Wilson was you know. the guy you were hearing stuff from, uh, you hear like bits and pieces of uh, what's that? Jacob Copeland had a really nice catch here, but you know, I don't know what perspective, you know, what context to put that in. A really nice catch is great. Yeah, big deal. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, put that in context. Yeah. Tight ends. Uh, Donnell Washington started to come on now. It was a yeah. little concerning that first week, but now he's really starting to make some plays, and we know he's going to be a good blocker. So uh, he's a little bit of a luxury because you have, you know, Fryermuth as your starter, but it would be nice for him to you know, pan out and become a big time tight end for them. Yeah. I mean, they're going to run him and fire him without there a lot together. So, yeah. and it was really interesting because um, Smith 
sort of bemoan Rodney Williams injury a little bit, which I thought was really interesting because, you know, clearly they, they, he seems to like Williams. Uh, and I think he really likes this, the, you know, all the tight ends he has, you know, you got Pruitt who seems to be doing a little bit of good stuff too. So yeah, they're going to run two, maybe even three wide receiver sets out there sometimes. So yeah, I think it'll be interesting. And one thing we, I don't know if you're planning to talk about was fullback too. And uh, you know, Coletto's out is there, and you know, he's in that mix too. Where he can, he's he's re, he's done a lot of stuff. He's he's a pretty versatile guy, so he can play in some of those roles in a pinch and do a lot of different things too. So, you know, they've got a lot of interesting components to all this. I don't know how they're gonna put it all together, but you know, they've got some really interesting guys there that they could put together to really keep defenses off the you know on their heels, hopefully. Paletto's very much in the mix to make this roster. There's no doubt. I mean, he's the only true fullback, although he's done other things, like you said, too. But yeah, you have Hayward can do it. Um, yeah, we have, we didn't mention Hayward, who's the other t- another tight yeah. end. So they, yeah. So they, they got a lot of options to, to go in a lot of different directions with that. Yeah. Uh, offensive line. This is where things get interesting and a little frustrating <laughs> at yeah. the same time. This left tackle thing, I tweeted out today. They've either – greatly mis- are misjudging the talent of Broderick Jones or he's just a bust. I don't, at this point, how does a first round pick that you traded up for not able to beat out a replaceable left tackle? I think it's more their concern over right tackle. Honestly, I don't think they ha- feel they have a right tackle because more can't play right tackle. That's a set thing. They, they, I, they, I, they made it clear more is not going to play right tackle. Unless there's an emergency, but he's not a starting right tackle. If that's the case, and then I feel like Vitano's ready, I think they're like, what choice do we have? My feeling is get Vitano out there, have him take his lumps, get Jones out in his posi- natural position left tackle, yes. get Frazier there at center, and get these guys on the line, get them getting their reps, get them, you know, th- this is two first rounders and a second rounder. We're not talking fourth, fifth round guys. Get them in their positions. Get them all playing together. Get them to gel because it's not like I posted this. This isn't just about their individual ability to, to excel. This is about the unit as a whole gelling together and excelling. And, and if that's your your future, is Jones at left tackle and Fatano at right tackle, and and uh, yeah, Frazier at center, then roll that sucker out. These are not yes. low investments. These are high investments. They should be out there, in one form or another. Uh, get them out there. And and the fact that Jones hasn't even taken any snaps at left tackle in practice is nuts. It's infuriating. It's just I don't know. I, I if you don't think Dan Moore can play right tackle, why didn't you go get a veteran right tackle as a backup, as as a depth piece? Why didn't why did you leave yourself force feeding Broderick Jones on on the right side and not you know this is this is madness at this point. And to boot now. There's a very good possibility, Ron, that that Nate Herbig is the starting center. One hundred percent. This is this is becoming. A, I know I've seen some reports where Frazier's struggled a little bit against some bull rush, some some power moves. But again, to your point, these these guys need to gel and play together. They need to practice together. This two, you said it. Two first round picks and a second round pick. It's the future yeah. of your offensive line. Get him out there. It Get should not take. A year for your center to start. I mean, I'm trying to think of you know centers around the league, and I think most of them started pretty quickly. And, and it's not like Herbig is a long-standing center in his own right. No. That's the thing that drives me crazy. He's playing well, but I mean, Frazier's coming on now too. I, I do think ultimately those guys will Frazier will start. I think it's the right tackle, left tackle spot that it still is a mystery to me because I just don't like, I even, I understand if you want to ease Fatano into right tackle and ease your Jones into left tackle still, you know, whatever. But the fact that, that Jones has barely taken a snap at left tackle is, is that to me is, I, I don't understand that. Or unless they feel like he's, he's plug and play and he, they don't need to worry about him. And so I don't think that's the case. I think I, 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 I would be stunned if it were too, but I mean, I'm just, I, I, don't, I don't understand it. They clearly, you know, they are, yeah, they clearly know better than me, but I just I certainly don't understand the 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 Is way that Pat Meyer thing does he does he prefer veterans over rookies and and is hesitant to I mean even like Spencer Anderson is getting most of the snaps at guard with with when Sayamalo's 
having days of rest instead of seeing what you have in Mason McCormick. I mean, this is well, if you're win now, maybe maybe you don't play a rookie until you're 100 percent sure. You know, the one thing about Tomlin is that we've seen is he is mistake adverse to maybe a fault. To a fault. Right. So yeah. I think he'd rather an average player who is a veteran who knows what they're doing be at that position than in, than your first round draft pick who may make a mistake here and there play. Right. I think that's and I get it. It just takes one mistake from your tackle to to, to get your quarterback killed. I get all of that. But you know, they're not giving them even the reps in camp enough to get them to the point where you could feel like you could trust them. And that's what I don't understand. It's, it's not so much the, Hey, they're not starting these guys as, Hey, they're not giving them a road to start. And yeah. I, I'm not sure I get that. And I, I can understand you know, the, the veteran thing to a certain point, but we're not talking about entrenched star player. This is right. Dan Moore. And, and as you mentioned earlier, Herbig who's played center a handful of times in the league. Yeah. I mean, he could get the quarterback killed just as easily as, as uh, Zach Frazier. Probably easier because he's not used to the position. I, I do think there's a little bit of the, oh, we like competition stuff in Tomlin. He's not going to hand anyone a starting spot, especially a rookie, until, you know, the, until, you know, the, the, you know everything starts, right? I, I think there's probably a little bit of that gamesmanship and you got to earn it and the slowly get it over over the course of the preseason. So there could be a lot of that too, which is not, you know, not something I'll put past, you know, a yeah. lot of coaches, Tomlin included. So I'm hoping that's it. I'm hoping it's just a, yeah, you got to go earn it, go get it kind of thing. But we'll, we'll see. I mean, I'll, I'll give you that one for the Herbig Frazier thing, the Broderick Jones thing. I just, yeah, I don't, I don't understand I mean, it we, either, but I, I really think it's about Butanu's ability to play right tackle immediately and, the confidence they have in him stepping in. I mean, I haven't heard a lot of how well he's done. Uh, so maybe they don't feel he's ready yet, but he wasn't supposed to be raw. I mean, he was supposed no, to. No, yeah, he, 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 that, exactly. He, this is supposed to be a, a plug and play tackle. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't get it. All right, let's flip over to defensive line. Um, Leal continues to impress, which is surprising yeah. and good, great news for this defensive line. I, I brought this up the last pod with Dave. He, if he can come on and become a player, this this is huge news for this defensive line. It really is. It looks like he certainly wants to. It looks yep. like he's – I mean, he was even involved in the fight, which, you yep. know, it sounds funny. But, you know, having a guy who didn't show a lot of fire, supposedly, come out and show some fire is, is what you want to see. So, I'd love yeah, to Tom see Tomlin's made some vague inferences to him not having the want or the, you know – yeah that right Tom would like to see. So maybe this is a, a new and improved Leal. This would be, that would be fantastic. That would be. Another one is Monty Adams is having a great camp from everything he is. So that's another yeah. big story. And I, I liked Adams. I always liked Adams. I, and he's versatile too. So they can put him on almost every yeah. spot on the line. So he's a kind of, you, you just like him. I think I, I, I said from the start, I, I don't mind. I think this defensive line is, is solid. It's barring injury. Right. I yeah. think it's solid. I think, I think Ogan Joby's going to be more healthy this year. Hay- Hayward's going to be healthy. Benton's should be light years better than an already good rookie yep. season. Leal's coming on. You got Louder Milk, who they like. Evidently, Logan Lee's looking even pretty good. I, I think um, I think this defensive line solid. Uh, I- yeah. I'm not overly concerned with it right now. I had concerns about the depth, but the- my concerns are-, are quickly going away because of all you hear at the camp from these. Guys, like I said, like Monty Adams and, and Leal, that's great news. I mean, Fahoko and yep. is playing well, yeah. <laughs> Fahoko, he was the running joke last year of not, never dressing, yeah. ever, never. It was and just, he probably it, won't this year either. Yeah, it's probably practice squad. Because I mean, he's such a nose tackle. He's like, that's who he is. Yeah. So, in you know, that you don't, you know, Adams has offers so much flexibility that I think Fahoko yeah. doesn't, and that's the issue for him. All right, inside linebacker, not much, too much this week. Uh, Peyton Wilson continues to impress. He's if he's healthy, he's going to be a weapon for this defense. It's, it's yeah. going to be fun to see. He and Queen are going to be at yeah. some point a hell of a tandem. I, I know Rob. I want Roberts out there now, and you know they, they've got uh, an embarrassment of riches at linebacker right now. Yeah, and it's just going to be really interesting to see how they use them. So we'll see. We'll see what they do. Uh, outside linebacker, we saw. Uh, 
Nick Herbig training with uh, James Harrison this week. Uh, that's, Herbig looks that's so good. small. He looks so. I, I commented on Twitter. Did you see his head snap back when he just made the contact with James Harrison? Like he ran into a wall, like a brick wall. It was, it it was like a brick wall. Yeah. It was funny. Um, he does look kind of small, doesn't he? he um, yeah. I, I was, I mean, I, I know it sounds funny, but he does not look like a big dude. And all this, you know, talk about him bulking up this offseason. It didn't really, I mean, we're comparing him, well, I am comparing him with James Harrison, who's a yeah, very I mean, large a tough man. person stand next to him. Yeah, for sure. That's, that's tough to look impressive to stand look, next to him. He still did not look huge, right? I mean, I noticed that right away. It's like, wow, he's pretty, like, svelte. <laughs> yeah, and that's the worry if he has to play every down with an injury, right. that he could wear down and, and maybe get taken advantage of in the run game a little bit. But, that's why you like a guy like Gold in there. Yes. And, yes. And you now they have kind of you, an embarrassment of riches at outside linebackers because I like Moon. I like Jeremiah Moon. I think he could probably, yeah. you know, develop into something. And now they have well, they're, they're about five deep at offensive uh, outside linebacker now. So, yeah, and you hear what they're, they they're starting to run some three outside linebacker sets. I did see that, yes, yeah. which I think is kind of cool because I you know you get your best guys out there, you know, get your best guys out there and. I like that they're experimenting more with that. You know, I like that they're getting their best guys out there and, you know, I like to see them do that on offense more with the, with the line. But, you know, I like that on, on, on defense, they're playing those guys. Me too. Uh, let's go to cornerback. Um, BB Bishop has been pretty much the star of, on defense for this, like the unexpected star of the defense so far. I mean, he went one-on-one with George Pickens and held his own. Yeah. And, and some of that stuff, uh, He's taken. How this... did people miss him? How did no I one accept him? I don't understand it. Still don't get it because yeah. Like, even when the Steelers signed him, there was there was you know a lot of you know excitement around that signing. Like this yeah. is a good player yeah. that fell through the cracks. I mean, he's a smaller guy, but not like happens every small. year. But yeah, yeah, maybe he's such a special. Maybe he's just that's the one thing he can do that people feel he can do, and you don't spend a draft pick on a nickel like. But why? I don't know. Nickel cornerback so important this day. It's becoming important, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. And um, Graylon Arnold's giving him a run for his money also. He's having a good camp. Yeah, that's the one that I was thinking of that made Isaiah Scott maybe expendable. Yeah. And Thomas Graham, too, is is not playing poorly, too. Yep. So I think, you know, Jose Scott was probably just like, look, you know, know, I'm not going to get a side here. So, yeah. Um, Darius Rushes look good. So far, he's looked good. They're even putting him in that that uh, nickel spot or whatever dive yeah. spot for a little bit. And Dante Jackson's looked great. Yeah, Dante Jackson's looked surprisingly good. Yeah, let's hope he can keep that up. He's he's one of those guys that's excited to be here, excited to be a Steeler, yeah. probably excited to be out of Carolina and that shit show that was going on there. Yeah. So uh, maybe I've judged him too harshly. I was really down on that trade, but we'll see. I saw a couple of clips of Deontay Dro- Johnson dropping a couple of balls, so <laughs> nothing's changed much over there. Yeah. Yeah. And they, um, Desha- I mean, this secondary is going to be solid. Deshaun Elliott I, and I, I Casey, so. who's a really nice, versatile player. I really like Casey back there and, and what he can do. Yep. Uh, you know, and Trice, Trice hasn't been able to do much yet, but we'll we'll see. You see, they used him as like a dime, uh, dime linebacker. From, yeah, he was the dime steps. linebacker. Yeah, yeah I, yeah. I said rush, but Trice was yeah, right. So that's we'll interesting. See. Yeah, it is. It is. They're trying to just. I think they're probably experimenting a little bit like Kendrick Green or fullback kind of stuff, but yep. you know, it's that's the time to do it. Um and Cam Sutton got some uh strictly safety snaps, not like dime yeah. stuff or anything, just strictly safety. I wonder I wonder what's that what that's that's about. If they're thinking about maybe moving him to safety at some point or maybe just you know what? Maybe it's just about depth. You know, yeah. they're they're not as deep at safety. Uh even at corner they're not super deep, but like I think you know the you know, if you can get guys that are versatile who can learn different things, I think it's, I think it's about getting guys who are in your depth area of your roster to be able to do more than one thing, so that you can plug them in different spots and you know what Sutton can do at corner and in the slot. But what can he do at safety? Maybe you know if there's an injury, you got to be able to find places for guys. And it also may show that, hey, look, you know Bishop's looking really good when Sutton's back. You know, maybe we won't need Sutton there after all. So where will we play him? And yeah, maybe that's... safety is one of those ideas, you know, as you come and bring your third safety in. Yeah. And I think um, third safety is the perfect position for Devontae Casey. Uh, I think he got exposed a little bit as a starter last year. Yeah. 
but as a third safety kind of, you know, Swiss army knife piece in that secondary, that's, that's a good spot for him. I, I almost thought that maybe he would compete with the for the slot corners position, but he hasn't been used at all there with, with Beanie Bishop playing so well, and they don't need him there. So yeah. yeah, that's a good spot for him. I think starter is a little above his pay grade, but. Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. He had one really good season as a starter, but I think it was more, you know, I, I don't know, he had a lot of interceptions, but I can't speak for the, the other side of that play. You know, did he let up a lot of passes? That, that I don't know. So overall, not a lot to complain about with this so far in two weeks of training camp, other than the offensive line stuff. I mean, this everything seems to be going pretty well. Yeah. Um, having Arthur Smith is going to be a big, big upgrade. I don't even it think will. we can quantify how big that's going to be. And we even have a punter now. Cameron Johnston is looking good. And in, in, we yeah. may not have to worry about the punt situation, which would be fantastic for once. The, the big things could be Wilson's injury and what they do with his offensive line. I mean, those are the two big things, right? Yeah. If uh, the, if they can get the offensive line settled and if Wilson can come back healthy, because I don't, yeah, it does not look to me like Fields is going to be the answer right now. I mean, I know people are really excited about what they've seen him do, but keep in mind too. When a lot of the a lot of the touchdowns they scored in those seven on sevens were by runs, you know, running back yeah. or him, and he's not gonna get those easy runs when people are allowed to nail you. Right now, it's training camp. It, he's not; those aren't gonna come that that freely for him on Sundays. So I think, you know, it's it's not gonna be he's not gonna be looking as good doing the same things he's doing now when it's game time. Uh, yeah, that's 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 for sure. To think Russell Wilson got injured pushing a sled <laughs> is 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 beyond comprehensible. I, I, I don't get it. We, I know we beat this to death the last podcast. I don't want to go into too much, but it just it just what are we proving? Making a 35-year-old quarterback push a sled. I mean, what do we what <laughs> there's no explanation yeah. for it. There's and, no and, upside like to, to it. I don't know. I, I I would love to learn a little bit more about what that was about, but yeah, it would, he take it upon himself. Was he showing off and said a little? Yeah, it push could, could be. Yeah, it could be a lot of things. I mean, you know, I'm sure Tomlin will take one for the team in terms of taking the blame for it if need be. But I don't. Yeah, I I can't. I don't remember Ben Roethlisberger pushing sleds. <laughs> yeah, that was, me so, neither. I don't think that was going to happen ever. Yeah, so I, I I would suspect this was more of a Russell Wilson thing than a Mike Tomlin thing, but. Mike Tomlin might have asked him to do it, but told him where you could take that idea because, you know, <laughs> Ben kind of did his own thing. Yeah, there's that. Uh, um, very funny. Yeah, and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> Good joke, coach. I'll be yeah, over here really. if you need me. Yeah. Um, before I let you go, gun to your head. Is Brandon Ayuka a Steeler week one? No, I don't no. think so. Part of me, no. like I'm 20%, like maybe – like when we log <laughs> off, he, he, might, he might be, you know. <laughs> uh, but I, I just, don't think so. I just think I, I think he. I think is good. He may go somewhere. I just don't think Pittsburgh is going to offer up all the things that it takes to take to get him. I mean, they've got the room, but it is really. I know I said they've done this stuff before, but rarely, and it's really unlike them to to spend the money and the picks on a guy like this, but. Maybe, maybe they do. It'll, it'll be this put this way. If they do, it's going to be extremely, extremely telling of the mindset of this team. Yeah, it's it. It, it all depends on how much real pressure there is. Yeah, from ownership to get a, get a playoff one. Is this yeah. something, especially Mike Tomlin? Because you know Omar has only been on the job for what not two seasons, so it's yeah. I don't. But Mike Tomlin's feeling the pressure to win a playoff game. This is yeah. This has become a narrative now where the, it used to be no no losing seasons was the narrative. Now it's no playoff wins is the narrative for him. So that's not a good Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. Uh, we'll see. I mean, if it doesn't happen this weekend, it's not going to happen. Because yeah, he's, you'd like to get him in camp and get this thing rolling. Right? Also, he's not, you know, he wasn't in practice today, you know. It's so I, I think yeah. something's bubbling and it's either going to settle down, he's going to go elsewhere or – or resign or whatever, I I don't I don't think it's going to extend beyond this weekend from Pittsburgh's sake anyway. Okay, I think that's all I got. Unless you got anything else? Uh, no, no, it's good talking, good. good catching yeah. up, and uh, next week will be game game weekend. So yeah, a week from today, be fun to see them play a little bit.
Absolutely. Uh, any interviews you want to plug before we get out of here? Uh, got Sammy Coates. Uh, you know, it's a lot of the, a lot of the usual stuff, but uh, Sammy Coates and not Steelers related, but I spoke to one of the remaining Pittsburgh Thunderbirds basketball team. Or oh, Pittsburgh wow. Thunders, I mean, basketball team. Uh, players the other day because I just thought that'd be kind of fun to do. So I'll oh, post that soon. It was a fun interview to oh, good. hear his story. All right. Um, guys, hit that subscribe button for us. Uh, that really helps us out a lot. Don't forget to do that. R rate this podcast as well. That that gives us that helps us out a lot too. Uh, until next time, thanks for listening to the Steel Sanctuary Podcast. Thanks, Ron. Thank you. Good seeing you.